Hello and welcome back to the World of Warcraft Legion Beta. Uh, we'll be checking out in this video the Blood Death Knight. As you can see here, I've kind of... Thank you, friend. I've kind of gotten a little bit of transmog together uh, to add some flavor to it. Uh, but before we start, I do want to mention I am on a template character, so I am in 680 item level gear. Uh, you may be way beyond that, so your experience may be a little bit different than mine. Also, want to show off some of our passives so you get an idea of you know what, where some of our stuff is coming from. Uh, we have Crimson Scourge. Your auto attacks on targets infected with your blood plague have a chance to make your next death and decay cost new, no runes and reset its cooldown. We have Blood Shield, which is our mastery. Each time you heal yourself with Death Strike, you gain 21% of the base amount healed as a physical damage absorption shield. And this also increases your attack power by 14%. And we have On a Pale Horse. You are as hard to stop as death itself, increasing your mounted speed by 20%. And finally, Veteran of the Third War, increasing your stamina by 50% and armor by 15%. I have skipped uh, all of the opening stuff that you would do in kind of on the pre-patch here on the beta uh, so that we could get right here uh, to Dalaran at the Broken Isles. Spoiler, uh, but you're probably not too worried about spoilers if you're watching this. Um, and uh, if you're looking for anything in particular, please check in the description below. I do have annotations to times where certain things uh, will start. I have not played Death... Uh, death? Uh, Blood Death Knight in a while. Uh, so uh, maybe a little bit rusty and especially trying to get used to all these new abilities. I did pick my talents already. We'll go over these a little bit later. So some of these buttons are actually talents uh, and not baseline. You can have passives to keep you know your bars a little bit cleaner than this. But uh, if you're gonna if you're cringing while I'm playing this, I do apologize. But uh, I am trying to learn this as I go. Well met. And here we go. Ah, it's good to see you on your feet. The members of the Council of Six are recuperating from their ordeal. The intensity of the teleportation spell can be disorienting. It seems you lost consciousness for a time, but at least you didn't awaken to find yourself stuck in a wall. Dalaran has been relocated to the Broken Isles. From here, we will spearhead the effort to acquire the Pillars of Creation and drive the Legion from Azeroth once and for all. And with that, we'll get our Dalaran Hearthstone, which is basically our new uh, Garrison Hearthstone and five tomes of the Tranquil Mine, which are used to reset your talent points. Light Thank you, friend. You. Reset your talent points uh, out in the open world, in a raid, or in a dungeon, and uh, as long as you're not in combat. So, hang on to those uh, for later use. Put this on my bar just in case. As you can see, I don't have any uh, quests available to me, and I have none in my bar. If you run around, you will eventually uh, get prompted to start your class order campaign and your, your weapon campaign, or your quest, weapon quest. Uh, by someone very special. Spoiler alert. <laughs> but I, again, I think you knew that. Goes to you. A chilling thought brushes your mind. Hear me. The Legion has returned. They hope to control us, to bend us to their will. Fools. They will only walk back within reach of our blades. Your brethren within Dalaran have begun to gather at Krasus's landing. Go. Meet with Duke Lancral and all will be explained. So we are working with the Lich King. I will listen. I'm sure you have many now. questions, but they're just going to have to wait. We're at war now. We have to move quickly, but I'll try to explain what I can. We have an unexpected ally in this war, and we're going to need every advantage we can get to defeat the Burning Legion. The Ebon Blade will serve as the Lich King's arm as long as the Scourge is confined to Northrend. In return for our assistance, our ally has offered to assist in obtaining powerful weapons for the strongest of our knights. Weapons powerful enough to end the Legion once and for all. You are one of our best. I want you to decide which weapon you would like to seek out. There's so this is the to UI to pick what artifact weapon uh, you want to go after at the beginning of Legion. You can go get the other two at some point. The first point being level 102, I'm not sure about the second, but you definitely have the opportunity to get all three uh, of the artifacts. Uh, also, keep in mind that these all these item levels start at 750, and uh, there are catch-up mechanisms uh, for you to catch. Like, if you play Blood all the way to 110, and then you go back and get, you know, you want a DPS spec, uh, so you go back and, you know, get the Unholy Weapon or something. Uh, you will have ways to catch up so you can 
catch up on your traits and stuff, uh, and keeping your, your item level uh, relatively close to what your main weapon is. Okay, so let's get started. Gorlix the Flesh Ripper is a monstrous demon warrior. With his massive axe, the Maw of the Damned, he has devastated entire worlds in the name of the Legion. Taking this powerful weapon from Gorlix will require treading directly into the heart of the Legion's assault on our world, but the power of the Maw is well worth the risk. So let us go get our weapon, the Maw of the Damned. <sighs> yes. Excellent choice. Suffer well. A powerful mind again touches your thoughts. Orlix the Flesh Ripper is a monstrous demon. The butcher of a thousand worlds, he has exterminated countless races with his axe, the Maw of the Damned. A group of Ebon Blade was dispatched to slay him, but they have gone missing. You will succeed where they failed. You will not be alone in this. I've sent Baron Sliver to ahead to assist you. Go, and obtain the Maw of the Damned and to ensure... Well, go obtain the Maw of the Damned and ensure that Gorlix is no more. You have to excuse me. I am extremely tired. As you can see for me, it is just about 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm trying to finish up the Death Knight <laughs> videos and get them on to my channel before... The patches go live, the pre-patch goes live in a few days. And also, I want to get the, uh, get working on the Death, uh, Demon Hunter videos, which are going to take much longer, as I'm going to play all the way through, uh, their, you know, scenarios of getting their weapons, and then also playing them, uh, through all of the zones, the leveling zones. So, I do apologize if, if this video seems a bit rushed, or if I seem a little bit off. I'm extremely tired. Okay. Uh, we're going to enter the Legion portal, so here it is. Uh, shit, let's just do it. We don't play no games. Except for this one. We'll play this one. Baron Sliver should have already arrived. Search for him. There he is up there. Looks like we have a friend. suppose I owe you one. I almost had my final death there. The Lich King said my partner would be one of the mightiest knights ever known. I assume he was speaking of you. I'll rely upon your skills to get us through this in one piece. Let's get going. Felgard roamed the path ahead. I've kept my distance from them, but with you leading the way, we can fight through. So you can see, you do take a fair bit of damage. I'm trying to keep some of my abilities up and keeping my health up, but uh, might need to heal in between some of these pulls. I'll bring down the barrier. Watch my back.
Just a little and down it what goes. What is this? More foolish mortals infesting my realm? You've come a long too way, far away just to die. Knights, escape while you can! This demon is too strong to... Silence! I shall drain your blood next! Margrave led the previous team that tried to kill Gorlex. I'm surprised he's alive. I didn't think the Legion kept prisoners. Mortal flesh parts so easily! Did you hear that? I think something's in that building up ahead. Let's investigate. Well, if it isn't Margrave's protege Dagnar. Finding you strung up like this is a surprise. I would have expected a more gory end. Spare me your gentle words, however. I've not had me final death yet! These bloody demons are gonna learn the new meaning of suffering when I get free! A beast called Salanor carries the keystone that unlocks these bindings. Free me, and I'll help you slay the bastards! I suppose you'll be more useful to, to us alive. Very well. Let's be swift about this. Oh, doesn't seem... Uh... Doesn't seem like he could take too much uh, damage from multiple targets, so that was my fault. Thought it'd be a little bit tankier than that, but uh, I overestimated my abilities. Finally, the keystone is ours. Let's head back. Uh, do keep in mind, sometimes the NPCs you're running with just run the hell ahead of you, even before you're ready, so uh, it can be a little frustrating, but... It's a, a bit how they were designed. <laughs> That's much better. Listen, we don't have much time. They took Margrave to the Citadel. We're gonna have to break in there to get him out. 
We're here to slay a demon, not rescue every failure who couldn't get the job done. What? Don't you have any sense of duty to aid your fellow knights? I don't care. Slaying the demon is our first priority. Come, we've wasted enough time with this blathering. Blast you, sliver! Fine! I'll help ye! But I'll rescue Margrave first chance I get! I'll be taking this for myself! Uh, you really don't want to walk across this shit here on the ground, uh, so use Wraith Walk. What are you waiting for? Get a move on! In true uh, escort fashion, they run all the way the hell back across it to run all the way back up. And pull I the ship limb from limb. Another damned barrier. Watch my back. We'll probably get jumped again. For the Legion! Another bunch of them headed our way! The barrier's down. Move quickly! Foolish mortals! Are you so eager to take the place of my next meal? So be it! This prisoner is useless to me way. anyway! Its blood is weak and stale! It's too far away. I need to get closer.
again, a little situation where uh, you just have to use Wraith Walk to get through here. So, pop that ability, boom. Take a little bit of damage as you get through. As you can see, uh, our little blood elf death knight friend is a little impatient. What are you doing? Run, you fools! The demon is near! Fly, you fools. Not that difficult of a fight. I mean, you're supposed to use... I'm just going to heal up while I'm talking really quick. You're supposed to use, you know, all of your tanking abilities to kind of get through that. It wasn't that difficult, though. Uh, even an idiot like me can do it. But, as you can see, we have the Maw of the Damned available. Let's pick it up. And there we go. Now let's get out of here. The Lich King will be eager to hear of our success. So, before we go through, uh, let's stop for a second and take a look at the Maw of the Damned. Suffer well, old friend. This is the Blood Death Knight two-hander. Pretty cool. I think this looks better than uh, kind of all the two-handers you're gonna be able to transmog. Uh, there also are specific transmogrifications available through Legion by various means uh, for the weapon uh, specifically. So, if you're interested in that, uh, you'll get that as you progress through Legion. Uh, you can also, if there's something you particularly like a hell of a lot better than this, uh, or any of the transmogs, you can always transmog it to any two-hander uh, you want. So, keep that in mind. We did get uh, an ability, too. Uh, we have Consumption. This is an instant cast with a 45 second cooldown. Uh, as long as we have the weapon on, we can use this ability. This will strike all enemies in front of you with a hungering attack that deals 46,527 physical damage and will heal you for 100% of that damage. So you get a big pack of AoE uh, mobs in front of you, pop this ability, and you get a hell of a lot. Uh, and we'll take a look at that animation a little bit later on. Well, let's take our Death Gate. And the Lich King wants to speak to us. You have done well. Ascend to my throne and receive your charge. Where the weak showed mercy, you did not hesitate to strike. Where the unworthy were vanquished, you have conquered. As we speak, the Ebon Blade is en route to the Broken Isles to hunt for the Dreadlords. Go, ensure that not a single demon escapes my wrath. Crush all who stand in your way. 
uh, so you can see, we're working with the Lich King. It seems like that might be a part of the storyline later on. Uh, it doesn't seem like he's changed too much, even with Bolvar uh, being at the helm, per se, now. But here we are, we're in Acherus, uh, and this is our class order hall. You can see whenever uh, you're in your class order hall, this will appear uh, at the top of your screen. And let's go ahead and meet up with High Lord Darian Mograine, and then we'll take a look at some of our class order hall uh, things. I'm not going to run around too much here, uh, like I did in some of my other videos for other uh, class halls. Uh, Acherus has been around for a long time, so if you haven't seen it, uh, you, haven't been, you haven't been playing the game very much. <laughs> that axe makes me feel uneasy. Its power is undeniable, but its very essence embodies the eternal hunger. We will use it because we must do whatever it takes to win this war. Still, I'd be careful with that weapon if I were you. We must forge our own destiny. You are given a position that befits your accomplishments. Knights of the Ebon Blade, assemble as we honor one of our own. Before us this day stands our comrade in arms. You have all heard the legends of countless battles fought, of trials overcome at great cost. His exemplary deeds in the name of the Ebon Blade have shown him to be one of the best of us, worthy of our highest honor. By the will of the Lich King, and upon my authority as High Lord, I declare that this champion, wielder of the Law of the Damned, will henceforth be known as Death Lord of the Ebon Blade. You will all bow to him as you once did to me, and carry out his will against the Legion! Woohoo! Okay, so now we are the leader of the Death Knights. And we have a quest available to us now. Greetings, yes. Death Lord. The blades, the blades you hold, while magnificent, have much untapped potential. As you harvest the souls of your enemies, their power will continue to grow. Grandmaster Corvus has studied new techniques that may be of use to you, my lord. You can find him working on the, f uh, working the forges on the upper level. Uh, looks like there's a little typo there. The blades you hold. Uh, well, sweetheart, we're only holding an axe, so. Maybe she's blind. Here. Maybe that's an RP thing. Maybe she's blind. She can't see. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'll put that in a ticket when I'm done. Uh, it seems like they're talking about the Frost Death Knight. Or she's talking about the Frost Death Knight. Uh, while we're running over here, I'm going to talk about a couple of things uh, beforehand. Number one is, if you talk to this vendor here, uh, he does have a set available to you. Now, you might say, uh, can't be that great of a set, and it's really not. I'll show it to you here. Uh, it's the Death Lord set. It looks terrible. It can be transmogged, of course. It looks pretty terrible. Yeah. It looks kind of special, uh, if you ask me. But I'll hover over it, and if you want to pause the video for a second and take a look at the set bonuses, you can. I'm not going to read them off. Uh, you can see that the set ranges from item levels 810 all the way up to 840. And uh, you can see they have other... Uh, requirements besides being level 110, such as requiring six champions for your order hall, uh, being honored with the Nightfall, and all the way up to earning 100,000 artifact power and being exalted with the Nightfall. Uh, this set uh, is pretty much uh, useless if you are a, a say, how you say it, a, a hardcore player. If you're a hardcore player, uh, it's going to be playing a lot. This set's probably absolutely useless to you. Uh, besides maybe the epic 840 pieces, I, I, I'm not even sure if that's be worth it for you, because uh, by the time you get exalted with the Nightfall and have 100,000 artifact power, uh, you might have already gotten, uh, you know, Warforged pieces or Mythic plus gear, uh, etc. But if you're a casual player, you're playing a Death Knight as an alt, uh, this set might be pretty good for you. You know, you might want to look into getting this set. Uh, you can also upgrading up, upgrading. You can also upgrade these 810 to 830 pieces uh, using these armor kits that they sell for order resources in order to upgrade that all the way to 840 so you can have a full epic set. Uh, so if you're somebody that doesn't really have a lot of time to play but you want to, you know, have, have a nice little set there to help you out in the open world, you can get that. And uh, these uh, armor kits work the same way that the uh, profession upgrades do in Warlords of Draenor. So keep that in mind. Keep this set in mind while you're going through. 
uh, you can see here we have order resources. These are just like garrison resources in Warlords of Draenor. Uh, you can see it's used to recruit troops, uh, which we don't have a UI, and I can't show you right now, but you'll be, you know, you'll, you'll get walked through that as you're leveling. Uh, the troops are kind of like minions from Warcraft 3. They might just be Knights of the Ebon Blade. They might be, uh, you know, ghouls or something like that. They might be abominations uh, that you could send off on missions, just like you did in uh, Warlords of Draenor at your uh, mission table. You could send them off and they all have their own uh, bonus to success chances. Uh, and they usually have three uses uh, and then you have to recruit more. But uh, yeah, you'll recruit them with order resources and uh, they're fairly useful. Uh, obviously it's showing that you run missions. You do have champions in your order hall. They're usually major lore characters or uh, maybe not uh, all major lore characters, but some of them are really major lore characters, like one might be, for instance, I don't know this for sure, it might be High Lord Darien Mograin, uh, it might be uh, Thessarian and things like that uh, that you could send out on missions. There's also bodyguards. Make sure when you start getting your bodyguard uh, or your bodyguards for you know, through your champions uh, for your champion hall, you're taking one with you out into the open world. It's really nice to have one with you while you're questing, and even when you're doing dailies at 110. Uh, they'll follow you throughout the open world. They won't come with you into raids or dungeons, but they, they could be a, a hell of a lot of help. So make sure you're always bringing one with you, unless you have to send them out on a, on a mission. Uh, you will also... Uh, use these order resources for research upgrades. Uh, your research upgrades, I can't show you the UI for it because I'd have to do some questing uh, to be able to show you that, and unfortunately I don't have time to go through all that, but uh, your research upgrades, there will be six tiers. The first tier uh, you will get, they'll kind of walk you through. Uh, it takes two hours for the first research to be done in 50 order resources, uh, so you, you won't really have to worry about not having enough for that. But the first tier is basically a choice between a 20% chance at mission success uh, on your first mission of the day versus having the opportunity to have uh, your gear upgrade uh, when you pick it up or when you loot it from like finishing a quest uh, to go from green to blue or epic uh, while you're questing. And that doesn't carry over into 110. Uh, you might be thinking, wow, that'd be really good for you know the world quests or the dailies, uh, whatever you want to call them. Uh, but it doesn't it doesn't work there. It only works while you're questing on non-repeatables. So uh, keep that in mind. And then as you go further down, you'll get into the 110 ones, uh, which start to take a while for the upgrades to actually go through. Seven days, 10 days, 12 days, and 14 days, respectively, for the last four. Uh, one of those being uh, one of your three, I believe they're called Broken Seals of Fate, per week, which are your raid bonus rolls. Uh, for free through your class hall. and the, But the last one is the one we're worried about. If you're a raider, uh, that's the one you're going to want to make sure you're keeping you know, an eye, you're keeping up on time on those, uh, because you'll be able to wear two of these, which are the legendary items, and these are the legendary items for the blood spec. Uh, as you can see, they're item level 895, and they have a boatload of base stats on them, which are very useful. And... Uh, they also have equip bonuses, which are what we're really worried about. Some of them are damage, some are utility, and some are defense. Uh, most of these are going to be defense. We'll take a look at three of these really quickly so you get an idea. For this one, after not taking damage for 5 seconds, you gain an absorb shield for 15% of your max health for 30 seconds, and this effect may not occur, or may occur once every 30 seconds. Uh, here we have increases the duration of anti-magic shell by 100%, and any damage it absorbs would heal you, and here's another heart strike reduces the remaining cooldown on vampiric blood by 3 seconds. So you get an idea uh, of what these are. These also are random world drops, they can drop from what I understand any mob they may have like specific mobs they drop from but we don't know that yet I don't think there's been enough uh, evidence of where they drop uh, to have kind of a table so we'll find out a little bit after uh, Legion goes live and also uh, there is fail safes in place Blizzard has said so that if you won't go the entire expansion without having any any of these drop ever for you uh, you know the more you go the more you go without getting one eventually you're going to have a higher percentage chance uh, than normal for one of these to drop for you. And again, uh, if you're a raider, getting this research done and being able to wear two of these uh, is going to be, you know, a huge buff to your damage, or your tanking or your healing, whatever you're doing. But in this case would be our 
we'd, we'd hope uh, it would help our uh, tanking ability because I know I would need it. Uh, okay, uh, we've taken a look at uh, that. Now let's go ahead and check out this UI over here. Ah, uh, this weapon is amazing. Do you see the souls of the dam dancing along its edge? Oh, how they scream for release. Yes, in their forms I can see how the blade must be shaped. I've been working for many years to improve the forges. This weapon will be the perfect demonstration of the Soul Forge, their latest design. We can take your artifact to the forge and shape it to make use of the power it contains, provided you fed your weapon enough souls first. Let's give it a little try, eh? So if we click on out of range. If we click on the Soul Forge, you can see it's gonna bring up the UI for our artifact weapon. Here you can see consumption the ability uh, that we got when we equipped the weapon. And here it leads to Sanguinary Affinity, a one rank passive, which will increase physical damage done by 5%. Uh, you can see this also costs 100 artifact power, which we have uh, just for finishing uh, the quest line and the basics of the tutorial. So let's click on that. And that's gonna open the, the rest of the traits. For our weapon, you can see there are three major traits that are available to us. These are the Golden Dragon Portrait traits. Uh, those are super important. They're the strongest. You want to kind of make your way towards one of them as you go. Eventually, you'll be able to get to all of them. If you do feel you've made a poor choice and you are hell-bent on respecking your weapon, you are able to do that uh, and respec the trait points. It does cost extra artifact power, though, and it's not necessary when it comes right down to it because eventually you will be going all the way through this, but, you know, if for, for some reason you decided that uh, you need to respec, you, you are able to do so. So uh, if you take a look over here, you can see we have two ways to go. Uh, both cost 300 artifact power for the first rank. Uh, now, it may stay static, it may stay 300 for all the ranks, or it may go 300, you know, 350, 400. I think that's the way they're going to do it with Blizzard. Uh, I think they've said they're not 100% on that yet, so I'm just giving you a little heads up. Uh, as to what the artifact power uh, cost may be for the different ranks. I'm also going to be reading all of these off as if uh, they're at their basic rank. And just as it says here, uh, you can tell, obviously, the percentages and the numbers are going to go up with uh, putting points into them, putting new rank points into them. So keep that in mind uh, if you're interested in knowing what those numbers are going to be. Obviously, you could do them in your head as, as we go along. So. Okay, Vampiric Fangs, a 3 rank passive. Vampiric Blood increases your maximum health by an additional 5% and increases all healing received by an additional 5%. Here we have Dance of Darkness, a 3 rank passive, increasing the duration of Dancing Rune Weapon, rune weapon by 2%. Here we have Meat Shield, which uh, is a 3 rank passive, increasing our stamina by 1%. And our first major trait, Umbilicus Eternus, a 1 rank passive. After Vampiric Blood expires, you absorb damage equal to 5 times the damage your Blood Plague dealt during Vampiric Blood. Here we have Vein Render, a 3 rank passive, increasing damage done by Heart Strike by 3%. Uh, we have Iron Heart, 3 rank passive, increasing armor by 2%. We have Mouth of Hell, a one rank passive. Dancing Rune Weapon summons a second copy of Maw of the Damned. While Dancing Rune Weapon is active, your Marrow Rend will generate an additional charge of Bone Shield. Ah, we have Rattling Bones, a one rank passive. Marrow Rend has a 30% chance to generate an additional charge of Bone Shield. Bone Breaker, a three rank passive, increases damage done by Marrow Rend by 8%. Here we have Blood Feast, a one rank passive heart strike heals you for 25% of the damage it deals. This is this is one of the big ones. This is one of the ones that I think is super important. A lot of anyone who plays a Blood Death Knight should be excited about that one. Uh, all consuming rot, a three. Hello. All consuming rot, a three rank passive, increasing damage dealt by death and decay by four percent. Uh, here we have our second major trait. This is Unending Thirst, a one rank passive while blood shield is active you gain 25 percent leech and damage dealt by death strike is increased by 25 percent uh we have coagulopathy coagulopathy okay that was a hard one to say i apologize that's three rank passive increasing damage done by blood plague by four percent 
Uh, here we have Grim Perseverance, a three rank passive, increasing your parry chance by 1%. And our final trait, our major trait, Skeletal Shattering, a one rank passive. Each time Bone Shield absorbs damage, it has a chance equal to your critical strike chance to absorb an additional 8% of the damage. Okay, we've looked at all the traits. You look up here at the top, we have three slots, uh, and two are available right now. One is unavailable, and that will not become available until you finish your Death Knight Order Hall campaign, uh, which can take you well into 110, so you don't have to worry about this for a while. These two are active now, and you can get uh, relics through quests and dungeons to put into these slots. They will add passive item levels uh, to the Maw of the Damned for you or any of your uh, artifacts, and they will also add passive ranks uh, to some of these abilities. So, for instance, if we had uh, three of three vampiric fangs and one of these added plus two to that, uh, we could have five points in that, and those numbers would be 25% instead of the 15% uh, base value we would have. So, uh, also keep in mind, uh, once you have put a relic into these slots, you cannot take them back out. Uh, you will overwrite them when you put some when you go to put something new in. It's not really a big deal while you're leveling because usually it's you know a pretty decent upgrade to where you're not really worried about it. Ten item levels is always better maybe than one uh, point in one of these passives. But at 110, when it becomes a little more difficult to get something uh, far far better, and you're just you know testing a side grade maybe, it's better to look that up online rather than just put it over top of because you whatever's inside is going to be destroyed. Uh, you can see here also we have a 1 here in the cor in our top left hand corner on this portrait. Uh, every time we put a point into a rank for up to 34 traits, uh, we gain a passive 0.75% stamina and 0.5% damage dealt. Uh, so you get a little bit of extra damage and extra uh, health just for putting points all the way around. So uh, that is the UI there. I do want to show you if you hit uh, shift and right click on the item itself, whether it's in your inventory or your character paint, you can open up that UI. You can put relics in these slots anywhere in the world, uh, but you are unable to put artifact power in anywhere but here at the Soul Forge in your class order hall. I would not suggest coming here every time you just barely get enough points uh, to put anything in while you're leveling at 110. It's probably a good idea because it, it costs a hell of a lot more, but uh, it, while you're leveling, unless you're putting a point in one of these major traits, and there's no, there's no point in coming back here every time you have, you know, 300 artifact power. Wait until you finish the zone, uh, come back here, it'll prompt you to come back here anyway. Throw all your points in and then head back out into the world. Okay. Oh yes, that will do nicely. Return after you've fed your blade another Feast of Souls, and we will make it the most powerful weapon that's ever existed. Your weapon is stronger than ever, but it will need many more souls in order to reach its true potential. Suxi has been collecting reports from the scouts. She will direct you to our enemies, and their screaming souls will empower your weapon further. So, uh, we're going to head back down to Suxi the Banshee. There's the uh, spider, the two million gold spider mount for anyone that was interested in seeing that. I mean, it's okay. I don't know if it's worth two million gold, but it's okay. Yes. Death Lord, I prepared a brief report on all we've discovered about this new land. You should find it quite interesting. Leave me be. Have you seen the fog that surrounds us? The chill winds of Acherus have provided us with the perfect concealment from the prying eyes of the Legion. Under cover of this fog, we've been able to send out scouting teams who put together a fairly comprehensive map of the Broken Isles. Choose where we shall begin our assault. You, of course, shall have the honor of spearheading our efforts but the rest of the Ebon Blade will follow your lead. There's work to so, be scouting done. map's right here in the middle. Click on that, it brings up this UI. You can see there's four zones from you to choose from. This zone here in the middle is Suramar. That's a 110-only zone. You don't have to worry about any of this over here. Uh, it doesn't matter where you start or where you finish, so you can start here or here or wherever. Uh, you feel uh, you're going to have the most fun. Uh, the zones level with you, so if you're, you know, 100, you start in Stormheim, as soon as you hit 101, uh, every mob in every zone is 101 now, and it'll continue uh, to do that. Uh, it does not matter if you're going to level, uh, let's say, with your friends, uh, as long as you're in the same phase of the same zone, uh, it's not going to make a difference. If you're, one, you know, 102 and he's 100, you're going to see the same mobs, you're just going to see them at different levels, and... Uh, you know, you can attack the same mob. It'll just, it's like a static difficulty, so it's not a big deal.
you don't have to worry about you know problems with that at least I haven't had any here on uh, the beta so far so you're probably not going to have any there and you will be prompted to come back here eventually uh, to pick your next you zone so. a fine choice death lord another time the greatest heroes on Azeroth have gathered to face the burning legion but heroes alone will not save this world. Salvation will come at a price the living cannot pay. The time of the Four Horsemen has come, and you will bring about their return. Nazgrim, the fallen general of the Horde, shall be the firstborn. Go now and see that it is done. So, the Lich King is now giving us some orders here. For us, there is no the voice peace, of the Lich King has no spoken, rest. Death Lord, and the Knights of the Ebon Blade will obey your command. The Four Horsemen were no ordinary Death Knights. They were born of pure unholy power gifted from the Lich King to Kel'Thuzad. This unholy power to raise the dead has now been passed to you, Death Lord. I am sure you will wield it with great conviction. The Four Horsemen will be powerful allies against the Burning Legion, and Nazgrim is a worthy choice as the Firstborn. We will see the Four Horsemen. I have my reservations, but I will obey your will, Death Lord. So. The Horde will be outraged, but Nazgrim will make a powerful Death Knight. Uh, we're not going to actually do that, so if you were interested in seeing that part of the quest, I um, apologize, I'm not actually going to be going to do that. Uh, it takes too long, uh, and it will make the video a little too long, so. Uh, but you will be uh, doing some special questing on the Death Knights part of their part of their quest line, if you will, or their lore for Legion. So, pretty cool. Uh, you'll be going to Duratar to speak with the Sarian and working on the Four Horsemen. Uh, which has some pretty major lore characters. Uh, and I'm not going to spoil anything for you. So, If you're interested in that, I'm sure somebody has videos of that uh, on YouTube. Uh, but if you are if you like to watch the story unfold, uh, I would wait for, for launch when you play through it. And and it's not just for Blood, uh, Unholy, and, and Frost. Also, we all do that quest line. So, uh, don't worry. If you're playing Unholy and you're like, oh no, I'm going to miss out, you're not. You can check my other videos. It's the same thing at the end. Uh, when we get to that point, we all are given that quest, the return of the four horsemen. Okay, let's look at our talents. Uh, in the 56 tier, we have Bloodworms. This is a passive where your auto attack crit strikes have a chance to summon a Bloodworm. The Bloodworms deal minor damage to your target for 15 seconds and then burst, healing you for 5% of your missing health. If you drop below 50% health, your Bloodworms will immediately burst to heal you. Uh, we have Heartbreaker, a passive where Heart Strike generates three additional runic power per hit per target hit. Uh, and finally, Blood Drinker. This is a one rune ability. It's channeled on a 30 second cooldown, drains 68,055 health from the target over three seconds. You can move, parry, dodge, and use defensive abilities while channeling. Uh, in the 57 tier, we have Rapid Decomposition. This is a passive for your death and decay. Uh, deals damage 50% more often, and while in your Death and Decay, you generate 15% more Runic Power. Uh, here we have Soul Gorge. This is instant. It will consume your Blood Plagues within 30 yards, dealing 5,921 Shadow Damage to each infected enemy, and empowering you for 24 seconds with up to 15% Rune Regeneration per Plague. Pl uh, plagues closer to expiration grant more runic regeneration, or excuse me, rune regeneration, and passive blood, blood boil will no longer apply blood plague. Uh, we have spectral deflection, a passive where attacks that deal more than 25% of your maximum health will consume a second bone shield charge to further reduce the damage. In the 58 tier, we have ossuary. This is a passive while you have at least five bone shield charges, the cost of death and Death Strike is reduced by 5 Runic Power. Additionally, your maximum Runic Power is increased by 10. Uh, we have Blood Tap. This is an instant cast with a 1 minute recharge and a maximum of 2 charges. This, is, this consumes Shadowy Essence and generates 1 Rune. The recharge time reduced by 1 second is whenever a Bone Shield Charge is consumed. 
and anti-magic barrier. This is a passive where anti-magic shell also increases your maximum health by 25% for 10 seconds. In the 60 tier, we have Mark of Blood. This costs 30 runic power, is instant cast. Places a Mark of Blood on an enemy for 25 seconds. The enemy's damaging auto attacks will also heal their victim for 2% of their maximum health. Uh, we have Red Thirst. This is another passive. Spending runic power will decrease the remaining cooldown on Vampiric Blood by 2 seconds per 10 runic power. And finally, Tombstone. Instant cast 1 minute cooldown. Consumes all Bone Shield charges for... Uh, each charge consumed, you gain 3 runic power and absorb damage equal to 3% of your maximum health for 8 seconds. Here in the 75 tier, we have Tightening Grip, reduces the cooldown on Gorfine's Grasp by 60 seconds, and your Death and Decay also reduces their movement speed uh, of enemies within its radius by 70%. We have Tremble Before Me, another passive. Enemies damaged by your Death and Decay have a chance to cower in place for 3 seconds, but cannot suffer from this effect more than once per 10 seconds, and damage may cancel the effect. And March of the Damned, another passive. Wraithwalk lasts 50% longer and breaks Stun, Snare, and Root Effects when cast. In the 90 tier, we have Will of the Necropolis. Damage taken below 35% is reduced by 20%. We have Rune Tap. One rune cost instant cast with a 25 second recharge and two charges. This will consume a rune to reduce all damage taken by 25% for 3 seconds. Uh, and Foul Bulwark, this is another passive where each charge of Bone Shield increases your maximum health by 2%. And finally, in the 100 tier, we have Bone Storm. This will consume 10 to 100 runic power. This is an instant cast with a 1 minute cooldown. A whirl of bone and gore batters nearby enemies every 1 second, dealing 6,779 shadow damage every 1 second, and healing you for 1% of your maximum health every time it deals damage. Last 1 second per 10 runic power spent. Now we have Blood Mirror. This is an instant cast 20, uh, excuse me, 2 minute cooldown, afflicting an enemy with Blood Mirror for 10 seconds. While active, 20% of any damage dealt to you is redirected to the target. And we have Purgatory, a passive, an unholy pact that prevents fatal damage, instead absorbing incoming healing equal to the damage prevented lasting 3 seconds. If any healing absorption remains when the effect expires, you will die. This effect may only occur every 3 minutes. So, uh, we've taken a look at some of our talents. Uh, by the way, this is not indicative of like the best spec by any means. Not, by any means. Uh, I was about to say by any means necessary. You can tell I'm really uh, starting to get un unbelievably tired. Uh, by any means, this is not the best spec. Uh, I didn't ask anyone. I just kind of made the character, picked what I thought would be pretty cool uh, to play with. This is probably uh, a spec that I would just mess around with if I was playing Blood. Uh, so, you may have your own spec. You may uh, look up a spec online after this has been on, you know, on the live servers for a little while, and you can kind of, you know, ma min max, uh, however you want. Okay, so uh, there's a tanking dummy behind me. I'm really hoping not to get hit by him again. He's killed me, I think, on both of my other videos because I'm too dumb and I forget. But let's look at some of our other uh, abilities that are baseline. Uh, of course, we have Death Gate, which gets us back here. Rune Forging. I, I don't think I mentioned. Uh, it might have been this character I mentioned on. I think uh, downstairs, if you go take the portal back down, there is a portal to Dalaran, so you can get to Dalaran, and then you could Death Gate back here, etc. Uh, Path of Frost. Still the same. Animation hasn't really changed. Uh, it didn't really show up there for some reason. Uh, raise Ally. This is our uh, combat res. Uh, returns a ally back to 60% health, health and 20% mana. Uh, rune tap. That's what that looks like. Nothing too special. Let's look at blood tap. That's the blood tap animation. Nothing too special there either. Uh, tombstone we'll take a look at in a little bit. There's any magic shell. Uh, instant cast one minute cooldown. For five seconds you will absorb 162,216 magic damage and preventing application of harmful magical effects. Damage absorbed will generate runic power. Uh, you can see the animation is a little different than it was on live. Uh, Vampiric Blood, instant cast 1.5 minute cooldown, embracing your undeath, increasing your maximum health by 30%, and increasing all healing received by 30% for 10 seconds. 
So there you go. You can see uh, I'm 1680 gear. Got a 702,000 health. Pretty good. Uh, if you're a much better geared Death Knight, you're probably going to end up well over a million. Or at least close to it. Uh, Exfixiate is baseline uh, for this. Uh, instant cast 45 second cooldown. Lifts the enemy target off the ground, crushing their throat with dark energy and stunning them for 5 seconds. So you can see they added a little animation there to Exfixiate. Uh, Mind Freeze, instant cast, five, 15 second cooldown. This is your interrupt. Dancing Rune Weapon, instant cast, 3 minute cooldown, summons a rune weapon for 8 seconds that mirrors your melee attacks and bolsters your defensive uh, defenses. While active, you gain 40% parry chance. As you can see, it summons another Maw of the Damned. Over there, beat the hell out of that. Uh, Death Grip is the same. Increases threat you generate against that target by 200% for 3 seconds, also after using it. Uh, instant cast 15 second cooldown. This is your taunt, uh, but I don't believe we can cast it. Oh, there we go. So there we go. Animation hasn't changed uh, drastically. Uh, control undead. One rune cost 1.21 second cast. Dominates the target undead creature up to level 101, forcing it to do your bidding for 5 minutes. Of course, that uh, level will change as we level up, because we're only level 100 right now. Dark Command, uh, instant cast, 8 second cooldown, this is our taunt. Uh, Gorfiend's Grasp, instant cast, 2 minute cooldown, shadowy tendrils around all enemies within 20 yards of a hostile or friendly target, pulling them to the target's location. As you can see, I just taunted everything, and I just taunted the damn train, oh god. He's gonna, at some point, I have a feeling he's gonna wallop me, I may even show you, just, uh, just for the comedic effect. Um, but we have Wraith Walk as well. This is a new ability, you can see the animation there. Uh, sidestep into the Shadowlands. Breaking root effects and increasing your movement speed by 70% for 3 seconds. During this time, all movement and pairing effects are suppressed, but any action will cancel the effect. Uh, and this, I did think, don't think I said it was channeled on a 1 minute cooldown. Uh, let's go over this side. This is Death's Caress, a 1 rune uh, cost ability that's instant cast, reaching out with necrotic tendrils, dealing 5,263 shadow damage and applying blood plague to the target, and blood plague drains 19,920 health from the target over uh, 24 seconds. That's the animation for that. Pretty cool. I like it. Uh, then we have Marrow Rend. Uh, Marrow Rend it costs 2 runes, is an instant cast, deals 35,299 physical damage, and generates three charges of Bone Shield. Bone Shield will reduce all damage you take by 20% and increases your haste by 10%. Each damage, damaging attack consumes a charge. These last for 30 seconds or until all charges are consumed. So we'll show you the animation for that. As you can see, there we go. We got Bone Shield. Oh, I don't know if there's a maximum. As you can see, we have 9, 10. It must be 10. Let's try one more here. Let's see if it sticks. Yeah, 10 is the max you can have. Uh, of course, we have Blood Boil deals 24,811 shadow damage and affects all enemies within 10 yards with Blood Plague. We talked about Blood Plague. Uh, Blood Boil will have two charges and is instant cast with a 5.51 second recharge time. They changed Blood Boil's animation just a bit, as you can see. I like it. I, they also changed the sound. It's a little less... Uh, Annoying, I guess, is the right word. Uh, and here we have Heart Strike. This is one rune cost. Instantly strikes the target and one other nearby enemy, causing 22,702 physical damage and reducing their movement speed by 50% for 8 seconds, and this will generate 5 bonus runic power. I need to so, get we'll take a look. Here is Heart Strike. <laughs> kind of a sweeping attack there. Uh, Death Strike now costs Runic Power. It costs 45 uh, Runic Power. is an instant cast, and will deal 55,100. And well, let's wait till this shit wears off. It might actually be less than that. It deals 45,421 physical damage and heals you for 20% of all damage taken in the last five seconds, and has a minimum of 10% of maximum health. So let's take a look at that animation. Pretty cool. I actually love the new Death Strike animation. Jumping up in the air and kind of sweeping down across the target. 
Uh, Death and Decay, one rune, instant cast on a 15 second cooldown. Deals 17,974 shadow damage over 10 seconds to targets within the area. While you remain within the area, your heart strike will hit up to three additional targets. So, boom. There's Death and Decay. Animation hasn't changed. But, uh... Let's see. Yeah. Can't quite hit all three here, but... If a whole bunch of targets were in front of you, you could hard strike all of them. Uh, here's that Blood Drinker ability we talked about. You probably saw... That's that animation. Uh, here's Bone Storm. We have uh, 100 runic powers, 115 runic power. So that's what Bone Storm is going to look like. Pretty cool ability. Uh, one second left on that. I love that ability. It's pretty cool. Uh, not quite the Bone Storm that you remember from uh, ICC, but a cool ability nonetheless. And we have our final ability here. Uh, well, actually, we have to use Tombstone. I'll I'm show you that. Let's generate some of that. If you use Tombstone, which again is one of our talents, uh, kind of gives a shield. That's all it does. That's just the animation there. That little thing on the ground. It's okay. <laughs> it's a little shield. It's pretty cool. Uh, but finally, we have Consumption. This strikes all enemies in front of you with a hungering attack that deals 50,508 physical damage and heals you for 100% of that. Boom. Big, giant, sweeping attack. Uh, pretty awesome. Let's just walk up to the training dummy. Oh, he's not watching us anymore! I didn't panic. I, ne I didn't panic at all. I just stood there and got... I thought I could get away. I thought I could get away. Uh, so be careful when you get near the tanking dummy. If you do accidentally hit it, uh, just stay the fuck away from it, because it for some it just trains on you and stays that way forever and beats the shit out of you, especially because it's level 112 and you're, you know, you're level 100 with barely any gear. Okay, guys, uh, I do want to thank you for joining me on this journey here today uh, to check out the Blood Death Knight spec. I actually enjoyed myself quite a bit, even though I wasn't very good at it. Uh, I do feel like this is going to be one of the better specs, uh, tanking wise. Uh, I know a lot of people have uh, have been talking about how good it is on the beta. Um, so if you're a Blood Death Knight or you're thinking about tanking, uh, it's probably a good idea. They have a lot of really cool abilities, a lot of fun animations, uh, and a lot of cool synergy between their abilities. Um, guys, if you did enjoy the video, please leave me a like. I do appreciate all the likes that I get. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave those as well. I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can uh, with an answer if you have a question. Uh, and if I can't find the answer myself by coming on this character, I will definitely try and find somebody that does have the answer uh, so that I can relay uh, any information to you. And I do reply uh, to any comments that I get, so uh, I do appreciate every single one of those. So guys and gals, uh, I do uh, want to thank you again, uh, and you have yourselves a wonderful day or a wonderful evening, depending on where you are in the world. And I do hope to see you in another video. Bye.